Hello, I'm Nathan Etherington, the Program and Community Coordinator here at the Brant Historical Society. Welcome back to Season 2 of Archival Discoveries, where we open documents at the museum to learn and discover something new about Brantford's history. Thank you for joining us in our March series on Brantford's industrial history, and today we are going to focus on the Massey Harris Company. As you can see from our envelopes here, we have quite a few documents about the Massey Harris Company. So we have just uh, a general envelope number one, uh, a very thick envelope number two and number three, and then this uh, one here that is labeled Massey Union Agreements. So uh, we'll explore these and see what kind of documents we have. Okay, so in this first envelope, we have uh, a, a drawing of the Massey factory itself, and uh, it mentions that there are uh, 500 workers uh, working at the Bramford Works at this time. And this comes from, at the top here, it says Massey Harris uh, Illustrated. So these are, uh, they had their own magazine, and it was done to promote products that they had. So uh, we see some of their uh, agricultural equipment there, the a binder, and here's another one for a mower. And then uh, here's yet uh, different types of mowers. So uh, they uh, had things like this to uh, help uh, improve and enhance their sales. So. Perhaps next, we will go to uh, some manuals. So we have here uh, a manual for a combine. We actually have two, so they're kind of similar there in, in style. So this comes from, obviously, a very different time in the company. It's much more modern, uh, but it gives you uh, a sense of kind of some of the products that they're producing at the time. The name has also now changed to Massey Ferguson, as it was known in its later years. So, uh, just some advertisements uh, for it and specifications, how, uh, how everything works, how to repair, uh, do simple repairs or maintenance, how the internal gears or mechanisms work, right? So uh, Combines is one of their uh, major project, uh, products that they made. Next, we have uh, a booklet that they produced for their 125th year anniversary. So starting in 1847, and now it's 1972. So uh, they do this, and there's Allenson, Har uh, there's Allenson Harris from our Brantford uh, location. Uh, and he set up that, uh, that Brantford branch of the company. Uh, again, a lot of their uh, early advertisements of the store, some kind of uh, political cartoons, a catalog of Allenson Harris from 1885, so it gives you some of the products that they were producing at the time in Brantford. And these are some of the really nice uh, kind of pictorial images of uh, some of their products, right? Brantford seal binders. And that was the thing that made uh, Harris a lot of money. And uh, he was able to... Uh, allow that to con continue to trickle down to one of his uh, offspring, which it turned out to be Lauren Harris of the Group of Seven. So even uh, advertisements in different languages from uh, a French and a Russian catalog as well. Sunshine Harvester, I wouldn't want one of those. Right. So uh, it's kind of like a neat little uh, booklet uh, describing their history. 
Here's an interesting uh, picture of Ferguson beating with hit Henry Ford. So now we're uh, into more mechanical types of uh, farming equipment. And then just the locations they were, they were a truly a global company here in Brantford. So sadly, the next thing that we have to look at is from the auction. So uh, in the uh, late 80s, uh, all of Brantford's major agricultural manufacturers uh, went bankrupt. And Massey Harris was also one of those companies that went bankrupt. And so they put it into what typically happens into a receivership and they are tasked with paying off the debts of the corporation and so often uh, materials, surplus materials, uh, get auctioned off to cover off those debts. So, uh, right, and it took them uh, six days to complete this auction uh, because of the size and scope and scale of all this equipment that they had within the factory to be able to produce all of the products that they needed uh, in, the, in the 80s as, you know, relatively modern uh, machinery. So uh, a lot more complex than in the horse and buggy days. And then they also have like an entire list of every single uh, lot so that you're be able to find it along with a location of where there's a photo of that equipment if there is one. So that's from the uh, end days of the company. So I almost lost this guy because he was so tiny and in the bottom. But uh, this is a little pocket compendium. So I, I assume that you would get something like this uh, once you ordered, uh, you know, a, a piece of machinery uh, or if you'd use them for repairs throughout the year as a kind of thank you. Um, and within it, it's kind of like a little notebook, but it also has some useful things like, uh, different types of knots that you may need to use on your farm. Also advertisements about their, uh, products along with some questions and answers, but in the back as well, which I found interesting, uh, accidents and emergencies. So these would typically happen on the farm. And if you think about uh, the state of healthcare or what it would have been in 1888 when you have an injury, a farm-related injury like this with some of these sharp metal blades, um, these skills are actually very valuable that you need to teach uh, farmers so that you would not uh, die in the workplace, right? So um, that's just like a, a neat kind of uh, uh, document that we have there. Okay, so moving on to Envelope number two, uh, here we have uh, a work order, and it looks like it uh, may have come from our John Bishop and Son collection and got misallocated into this envelope. But uh, just for some uh, supplies that they need, uh, a work order on Christmas Eve of all days. Uh, and then, uh, as I s suspected, these thicker envelopes contain a lot of uh, farm equipment manuals. Um, so it's kind of nice to like see these and look at them and uh, gauge them against modern mach machinery and also other types of equipment that they made to see uh, how they're different and what they would be used for, right? So uh, there's a corn planter, so again, very kind of similar looking theme. And then here's another uh, mower. And then uh, a manure spreader. So you need that to kind of help fertilize everything. And then uh, finally, the last manual on this one is a, is a doozy. It's a thick one and it's not in the best of shape, but uh, it's also uh, a manual with some uh, advertisements and history of the company um, and all their little satellite offices and locations, the factories, 
So we see the Brantford factory right there, the other Brantford factory there, and uh, uh, one in Woodstock, and then of course in Toronto, where uh, we're known for. So again, uh, an advertisement uh, booklet of all of their uh, products at a certain time period. Uh, so next we have something from kind of the end days of the envelope or of the company and it's uh, an inter-office correspondence envelope uh, and the, at the top here it says revised 0580 so that's how I know that it's kind of from the last days of the company. Uh, finally, in recognition of uh, uh, a major uh, player in Canadian history, uh, as normally does happen, uh, stamps get issued, special kind of commem commemorative stamps. So uh, we, here we have some of these. We, ha we have more of these uh, and originals that have uh, not been opened. Uh, but it gives you some sense of some of the um, stamps that they produced, as well as some of the historic kind of envelopes uh, that they did as well, included within that. All right, now we're going to have a technology lesson for all those young viewers out there. Um, but many of you probably use these within your lifetime. Uh, and so this is a punch card uh that employees would have used and uh in early computer days they would have these uh dimples or marks cut out and that you would slide that into a computerized system and it would read those as your binary series of zeros and ones so uh they used some type of system like that uh for uh massey ferguson here in envelope number three, we have yet more manuals for uh, other products that they produced. So uh, as we expect, lots of corn related products, uh, disc arrows for plowing. Uh, uh, some are not as well in the best uh, condition, missing half of their cover, but uh, this is for gang plow, which again was one of their well-known products. Uh, there's another one for a mower. We've seen some mowers. Uh, here's another one for a steel rake. And then we get into some uh, specialized kind of pieces. Uh, so we have a hay loader. And then uh, for our PEI friends, we have a potato planter. And then finally, uh, we have a different era, kind of, for our manual. Now, we're uh, later time period, into the 50s. We have a, a feed mill manual. And then there's another type of rake, uh, another side rake. Okay, our final envelope here, we have union agreements. So they're all done in these kind of nice little booklets. And uh, it's interesting kind of sometimes how far they go back, right? So this one's from uh, the late 50s after the war. And uh, it goes through uh, everything, how they're gonna be classified over time, security, f uh, pay rates. Uh, oh, that one had female as well, female pay rates, work rates, cleaning staff. So uh, they had all that stuff laid out in their uh, agreement. Um, now, as we compare the thinness of this one with uh, the thickness of the next one, uh, we're going forward in time, obviously. We still have our uh, same uh, union numbers, uh, but we've moved forward into the uh, late uh, 50s, early 60s. And uh, that's a time when uh, unions typically were very, very strong and they were advancing the cause of their workers. Um, so, uh, here's, uh, another one, again, from the late 60s and early 70s. So, another type of agreement. Someone put these in plastic. I don't like things in plastic. Um, it's not good for them. 
this one is another, uh, it's their benefits, uh, their benefit plan and those types of agreements uh, with those um, unions. And again, we don't know the year uh, from that. And then here we see one of the last kind of uh, health plans provided by Green Shield. And we know that company is still around today. And so uh, it talks about uh, that with a plan and an example of how everything works and uh, including your nursing home care plan, which sounds like it would be valuable today. Um, and uh, the date is effective 81. So we're assuming this is kind of, again, at the very kind of tail end of the company there. So we learned quite a bit today about the Massey Harris Company. We saw some early advertisements from the late 1800s from the company and Allison Harris. We also saw a whole bunch of manuals from various time periods of the company. Uh, we also saw some collective and union agreements as well as an identification card of one of their employees. So join us next week on Archival Discoveries when we talk about one of our lesser known companies G.F. Stern.